Today's data centers are filled with servers and storage devices with increasing power needs, and selecting the best rack PDU for your environment can be a challenge. This video is the first of three videos in the Selecting a Rack PDU series. The objective of this video is to define terminology and important power distribution concepts and to review basic details about rack PDUs. The next video, How to Select a Rack PDU for Your Data Center, discusses details about configuration options and which factors will impact what rack PDUs are best for your data center. The third video, Rack PDU Configurations, applies all the details discussed in the first two videos to create the best rack PDU solution for your data center. The first step in selecting the right PDU for your data center is to understand some important basic power terms and how power works. Amperage measures the amount of electrical current flowing through the circuit during a specific time period. It is also referred to as amps. If we use an analogy that power works similar to the way water flows through a pipe, amps would be the size of the pipe. Volt is equal to the difference of electrical potential between two points on a conducting wire. Using the water flowing analogy, volts is the pressure that is pushing the water through the pipe. Volt amps is the voltage multiplied by the amps. This rating is the apparent power which represents the maximum power that a device can draw. Using the water flowing analogy, volt amps is the total amount of water flowing through the pipe. When volt amps are measured in thousands, they are frequently expressed as kilovolt amps or KVA. An example is 2000 volt amps equals 2 KVA. All power from a power plant is generated the same. The same power that powers your home computer and appliances is the same power that runs massive data centers. The power is just distributed differently. In your home, power is distributed with 120 volt or single phase low line power. Data center power can also be distributed with the same 120 volt or single phase low line power. In this example, you can see 120 volts being pushed through 24 amps, which provides 2.8 kVA. Data center power can also be distributed with 208 volt single phase high line power. In this example, 208 volts are pushed through 24 amps, providing 4,992 volt amps or 4.9 kVA. Pushing higher volts is more energy efficient and delivers more power over the same size line, which means that this is generally a better solution. In addition to single phase 208 volts, data center power can also be distributed with three phase power. Without going into the details of three phase, you can consider it to be a modified group of three power lines. In this example, 208 volts are pushed through 13.8 amps times three, which provides 8,611 volt amps or 8.6 kVA. The use of three phase power is becoming widespread due to its efficiency in power delivery. Let's look at additional terminology that is used when talking about power in today's data center. A watt measures the real power drawn by the load equipment and is used as a measurement of both power and heat generated by the equipment. Using the water flowing analogy, watt is the amount of water that is actually used. Power factor is the ratio of real power to apparent power or how much power is being supplied versus what is actually being consumed. Most modern IT equipment has a power factor of 1, meaning that the equipment efficiently uses the power supplied. Factors of less than one signify less efficient equipment. A circuit breaker is a type of switch that is designed to protect electrical equipment from damage caused by an overload or short circuit. Using the water flowing analogy, if the pressure in the pipe becomes too high, the circuit breaker acts as a valve that closes the pipe. With such a wide variety of plugs and receptacles in the data center, it is important to have an understanding of this naming nomenclature. In North America, the NEMA and IEC plugs and receptacles are most often used. NEMA, N-E-M-A, is the National Electrical Manufacturers Association. This is a trade association for the electrical manufacturing industry and a North American standard. Let's take a closer look at this nomenclature. The letter L indicates a locking plug. The absence of a letter indicates a non-locking plug. The 5 in the 5-15P means low volt single phase. The 6 in the L6-30P means high volt single phase. If the first number is a 15 like in L15-30P or a 21 like in L21-30P, this indicates three phase power. 
The number after the dash shows the amp rating. In this example of the 5-15P, 15 indicates 15 amps. The 30 in the L6-30P indicates 30 amps. The last letter identifies a plug or a receptacle. P indicates plugs or male connector, while R indicates receptacle or female connector. Receptacles or female connectors have recessed holes with electrical terminals inside. They are constructed so the plugs or male connectors can be inserted snugly together to ensure a reliable physical and electrical connection. IEC is the International Electrotechnical Commission, which publishes international standards for electrical, electronic, and related technologies. IEC C13, C14 plugs and receptacles are found on most industry standard servers and storage devices. IEC C19, C20 plugs and receptacles are found on single-phase blades, larger routers, switches, and some larger servers. IEC identifies receptacles or female connectors with odd numbers and identifies plugs or male connectors with even numbers. The National Electrical Code, sometimes referred to as NEC, is a United States standard for safe installation of electrical wiring and equipment. Part of this standard states that a PDU cannot allow a continuous measure load that exceeds more than 80% of the connector or cable rating. The NEC defines a continuous load as three hours or longer. Following these standards, all PDUs in the United States should only carry 80% of the rated load. This is sometimes referred to as a derated load. It means that a 30 amp rack PDU is only supposed to carry a maximum continuous load of 24 amps. The NEC rated load on a rack PDU needs to be considered when data center operators want to provide power redundancy for their equipment. Without power redundancy, if a rack PDU fails, all equipment to it shuts down. To prevent this, all important servers and infrastructure equipment should have multiple power supplies and plug into at least two different PDUs. Power redundancy in a data center is extremely important. It can be achieved following this best practice. Never go above 50% of the PDU's rated capacity. This is called PDU power balancing and provides our redundancy. In this example, the 30 amp PDUs have a rated capacity of 24 amps. Feed A and Feed B are both drawing 12 amps each for a total draw of 24 amps. Power supplies in this blade unit are splitting the power load 50-50 between Feed A and Feed B. Half the power supplies are plugged into the 24 amp PDU-1, that is providing power to Feed A, and the others are plugged into 24 amp PDU-2, which is feeding power to Feed B. Many servers and devices have dual power supplies that split the power load 50-50. This is also referred to as redundant power. The last terms to discuss deal with how power is supplied from the utility all the way to the rack PDU. In the data center, power is fed from a central source of power such as the utility or a building UPS to a remote power panel also known as an RPP. An RPP has a breaker panel similar to the one found in your house. The pole or breaker position on the breaker panel connects to a whip. On the other end, the whip will have an outlet or series of outlets. Different levels of power require different types of breakers. A typical breaker panel has 42 positions or poles. A single phase 120 volt breaker will take up one pole or one position. A single phase high line breaker will take up two poles and a three phase breaker will take up three poles. Looking at the power chain from the IT equipment perspective, the IT equipment can plug directly into the outlets on a whip, but usually plugs into the receptacles on a rack PDU. The plug from the rack PDU, also known as the input plug, connects to a power source such as a UPS or an outlet on a whip. The whip connects the breakers on the RPP. Now you should have a working basic knowledge of electrical terms, plugs and receptacle types, and data center terminology. Please click on the next video in this series, the How to Select a Rack PDU for Your Data Center video, which discusses configuration options and which factors will impact what rack PDUs are best for your data center. Thanks for viewing this video. 